Today, we jailbreak the Inspire 2 to fly any lens up to four inches long and 400 grams, which includes these pocket anamorphic lenses from Laowa, or my new favorite lens, this Sure anamorphic 1.6 stretch full frame lens. Also, these vintage lenses. Why these vintage lenses? Because these are telephoto lenses. An 85 millimeter Jupiter 9 and a 135 Olympus Zuiko. And last but not least, my favorite, these incredibly low light F095 lenses, which are unimaginably bright. Holy shit, we're overexposed. In order to break the rules, you must first know the rules. And for this to work, there's only one rule. Gravity. Specifically, center of gravity. You see, DJI probably doesn't want me to show you this video because currently there is no way to fit any other lenses onto their DL mount Inspire 2. The DL lenses, after all, are made from carbon fiber, extremely lightweight, and are designed to be aerodynamic. They are also expensive. Now, optically, they are far superior than any of the lenses we're gonna add on today, but they have a few limitations. Currently, there's only four focal lengths, a 16 millimeter, 24 millimeter, 35, and a 50. The fastest they open up is f2.8, and while the 50 millimeter on a Super 35 sensor is roughly an 85 millimeter equivalent, like other things in life, it simply isn't long enough. But the biggest precipice for this video is there's no anamorphic option. And despite me begging DJI for years to offer an anamorphic lens for this drone, it seems a third party has. Only it's not meant for the drone. And this is where we break rule number one. This gimbal is not adjustable. There's also no room for counterweights. Like I'm the king of counterweighting things. The 400 2.8 on a gimbal, but also with the 360 cam mounted. <laughs> There's nowhere to mount it here. There's not enough room. Plus we want to have full mobility. This is made out of nickel and steel and it's heavy, but it's not the heaviest metal that we could use. So I think we have to take it apart. Now the first lens I'm gonna test out is the Laowa Nanomorphs. These are Super 35 1.5 stretch anamorphic lenses. They come in blue flares, amber flares, and neutral. I did a video on them a few months ago and they are fantastic across the board. They are the smallest 1.5 stretch anamorphics I've ever seen. And out of the three lens kit, the lightest is the 27 millimeter. And at 313 grams, it's double the weight of the stock DL lenses. The first step, we can't slide the axis of the gimbal back to balance heavier lenses. We have to fit a counterweight in between the tiny gap on the gimbal. Now at first glance, we got maybe six millimeters of room, but if we remove the rear intake cover, we score an additional three millimeters. Next, we'll need a counterweight. Normal steel won't cover it. I asked ChatGPT to compile me a list of the most dense metals with heaviest first. And out of all the metals, there's really only two options that aren't crazy expensive to use or radioactive. What's crazy is that these two medallion tungsten coins are almost the same exact weight of this stainless steel counterweight. And that's because tungsten is two and a half times the weight of stainless steel. So for counterweights, these are kind of perfect. <laughs> Just don't drop them because tungsten can't actually shatter. Now we just have to figure out how to attach them onto the gimbal. It's probably gonna be carpet tape. So the first test is to use some super sticky carpet tape. If we can get this balanced and flying right, then I'll work out a more permanent solution later. Now getting this perfectly balanced is a little bit of trial and error. For the 27 millimeter, it required just one coin, but I added a few quarters to get it perfect. After I did that, I jumped into the DJI app. There's a function to calibrate the gimbal motors. A for sure way to crash. This gimbal is not meant for these lenses and, and it definitely feels like it. Like I'm in sport mode and it is, it takes a minute for it to slow down. First thing I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to trim down the tilt because the tilt just wants to slam down too fast. So I need to make it a little bit more specific. We're shooting 6K on this, so it's probably gonna look pretty damn clean. Now I just set it to infinity, so hopefully that works well enough, but 
the quality of this anamorphic stretch? Is it gonna be the same quality as what we've had with the Moment anamorphic lenses for like the Mavic Pro 2? Or are we gonna see more of a difference like what we're used to with, you know, anamorphic lenses? So the thing about anamorphic lenses, it's not just about the lens flares. If it was, we'd have an easier time putting on a front mount flare filter or running a fishing line up the rear of the lens. No, the anamorphic look is about depth and fall off and compression and the small imperfections that make an image not so clinical. Now for drone shots, this can be very subtle because setting a lens to the background negates much of these characteristics. To really appreciate the full effects of the anamorphic look, we would have to set close focus on a subject and let the compression and fall off guide our focus from background to foreground. And well, this is very hard to do with dynamic drone movements, which also happen to be with an oversized manual lens. And while this look on a drone is subtle, it is noticeable and very beautiful. I believe it was Nietzsche who once said, You suck! You suck! Suck my fing you suck! So, a few things. Carpet tape is not gonna work. Look at all this. There's too much of a difference between the weight of the 35 millimeter and the heaviest lens, the 50 millimeter, and I think swapping tungsten coins between them with tape. Also, there was just too much shifting around of the, of the actual counterweight in the back, and I think that was adding to some vibration, especially with the 50 millimeter. Optically, the 50 millimeter was my favorite. It looked the best, it had the most compression, but it also suffered the most vibrations, and also when you tilted it all the way down, it just fell apart. So I think we need a more permanent solution. And this is where I introduce you to the MVP of this episode, Pinewood Derby weights. These are very affordable. We're still gonna use the tungsten coin, but we're gonna use these now to add a little bit more weight. Now the best part of this is that it comes in putty form as well. Are you, can you CAD something up for me? No. It's real quick, it's tiny. I'll just send you over the measurements and hopefully we can just put something together. Hayden is incredibly talented at CAD design and despite stressing about finals, he's always down for a Make Art Now project. Now we only have a few millimeters to work with here. If this one works out, then we can send off Hayden's CAD to be machined into aluminum later. But for now, corn. No, seriously, this print material is PLA. It's literally made from corn. An interesting problem we ran into is the gimbal rolls to the left when we add heavier lenses. So to compensate, I've requested a little wiggle room for the tungsten so we can shift it left or right as needed, but that means we'll need to add a set screw to lock them in. The next lens on the list is the Sure Saturn 1.6 stretch. Look at the difference between what Sure used to offer and what they now offer. These are full frame 1.6 stretch anamorphic lenses. They're a little bit more aggressive than the nanomorphs and they're also heavier. So this is a real test to see if our counterweight system is gonna work. Now at 383 grams, this is a few grams lighter than the 50 millimeter nanomorph but because it's longer with most of its weight towards the front element, we'll have to use more counterweight than ever. The putty is surprisingly heavy and it's made from tungsten powder and polymer, so it's very malleable. Not only does it fit in the crevices, but you can form it on the walls and it will stay in place. Because each lens has a different center of gravity, there is no one size fit all counterweight system. It's a trial and error game. The good news is you can use it over and over again. So what happens when you run out of putty? Back to the basics, I guess. I should note that out of all my test flights, nothing has fallen off. Oh, what a lovely day to go flying. All right, so now that we have this thing balanced, 
ready to go, we have to solve the focus issue. So I'm gonna rely on what's called the hyperfocal distance. Basically, after X amount of feet, everything's gonna be in focus. So we're gonna set it just a little bit short of infinity. I'm gonna set it on those houses way over there. Once I set focus, I lock it in place with a piece of gaff tape across the top of the lens so that regardless of, say, vibrations or gimbal tilt, the focus will stay locked at that position. Now, unfortunately, whatever focus you commit to on the ground, you're kind of set at. Another way to solve it would be set focus on the subject and then just try to keep that same exact distance by flying perfectly parallel to the subject. It's actually a lot harder than it looks. Although I will say, tracking alongside a car might be the easiest situation. That is, if you keep the same distance. Oh, not this f***ing sh** again, you f***er, I will A simple oversight. I forgot to balance the top and bottom. So currently, when you tilt the gimbal down, it's not balanced. This is an easy fix with the putty. If we remove a strip from the rear bottom and put it towards the rear top, the same amount of weight stays on the rear, only now it evens out the top and bottom. So when the lens is placed vertically, it stays balanced. Damn. Here we go, now we're talking, finally, Suray 1.6 stretch anamorphic lens, full mobility tilting all the way down, Now I have to stop. The focus is soft. So when Sue Ray sent me the lens, they sent me an E-mount lens plus a DL mount adapter. And so I just swapped the rear adapters. I did not correctly shim. All of those shots are out of focus. Unlike the nanomorphs that have a rear focus adjust, this lens does not have it you have to put the correct amount of shims on the back. So after a bit of trial and error of different thicknesses and finding the ultimate sharpness, you'll need a 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.05 for a grand total thickness of 0.6 millimeters, which is slightly less thick than a business card. Although maybe we can run them through Topaz Video Enhance AI. Now this episode isn't sponsored by Topaz, but it is my secret sauce, so it's about time I showed you how to use it. Now these AI models are damn good at up terrible footage. Because this footage is a little soft, we're gonna try running it through the Proteus Fine Tune AI model first. It's gonna reduce noise and strengthen the lines of contrast much more than if we just added a normal sharpen layer. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna try running it through a more advanced one like Gaia. Now granted, this isn't the most affordable program out there, but after I saw the incredible results, I did buy it and I use it quite a bit. There's a free trial and you can support my channel by using the link in the description below. Now, let's see what this soft anamorphic drone footage can look like. So now that we got the Suray 1.6 shimmed correctly, I actually think it's performing sharper than the Lao Nanomorphs. So just a reminder, most anamorphic lenses require rear focus for tack sharpness. Lao makes it easier, but you only need to set it once for the Suray. If I were to compare the two lenses for flying the Inspire 2, I would recommend the Nanomorphs. They are shorter and easier to balance, offering full mobility and with minimal oscillations. The Super 35 coverage of the lens has plenty of characteristics packed in the 1.5 stretch. And while Suray's full frame has slightly more aggressive squeeze at 1.6 stretch, it doesn't convert to more character when center cropped to a Super 35 sensor like the Inspire 2. I think Suray would be better suited on a full frame drone. And while others may be offing the Inspire 2, making room for a successor, there couldn't be a better time to snap up a deal on a second hand Inspire 2 still capable and now even more powerful with anamorphic optics. If you guys buy the putty in the tin can, make sure you leave the plastic little bit in there. This stuff is so sticky and impossible. The second half of this video is coming where we 3D print our own DL mounts and we make one for the F095 lens. I actually made this one out of aluminum. I wanted to cram this all into one video, but I need to make another one. It's too 
costly to just keep sending this back to a company to remake it. So I'm gonna get my own CNC machine. If you guys have any recommendations or connections with Carbide or Bantam or any other desktop CNC machine, let me know. Probably time I dust off the Skillshare membership and learn how to fusion basically no more late nights with Hayden so if you guys are interested in any of these brackets I'll throw these on my website I'll make a few prints for those who don't have their own 3d printers we can send the money to Hayden 20 years old he's paying his way through college he lives in Virginia and I've never met him in real life he's actually a really nice guy yeah yeah I can do that I'll I'll hop into my CAD program and give me one where you say no I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do this at all and then I'll just smile and then it, it's like cut of you doing it <laughs> you guys want to know if this workflow will work on the inspire 3 I'll put it this way this summer is gonna be a banger for anamorphic stuff